there is a disconnect during sex. If they were my clients, I would invite them to, in the moment when it's actually happening, to stop and slow things down and actually recalibrate with each other and say, okay, where, where are we at right now? Which is a little bit of kind of interrupting sort of thing. It'll yeah. mean that you're putting off potentially his orgasm, probably not hers. Yeah. But so what? You know, I don't want to interrupt the orgasm. I don't want to interrupt the flow. And I'm like, well, why? Do you have to have, do you have an appointment? Why not interrupt the flow? You'll get it back. Yeah, there, there will be another you know? one. <laughs> it's not a finite thing. It's an infinite resource. Yeah, they- I'm Cindy Darnell, and welcome to The Erotic Philosopher, the podcast where we examine and explore sex and relationships through social, cultural, political, and other lenses, and discover ways to solve some very diverse and stimulating erotic quandaries. This interview with Shadeen Francis is part one of two episodes. When I met with Shadeen, we ended up having such a rich and powerful discussion, we decided that we had to keep all of it. And rather than having one bumper episode, we've given you two separate episodes. So enjoy the first of two episodes with Shadeen Francis. Welcome to the show, Shadeen. Hi, everybody. My name is Shadeen Francis. Uh, The serious parts of my job title, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Mm -hmm. I'm a psychotherapist by training. Um, But in the world, people are most likely to connect with me as a sex therapist, as a speaker, as an author. I write a ton Uh of sex ed curricula um, that really hopes to bridge the gaps between What we all kind of know about ourselves already and what we need to know in order to have sex lives that feel pleasurable and mental, you know, experiences or relationships that allow us to really feel well. Nice. I want to read you a letter from a millennial, Mm. as it were, and I want to hear what you think about Mm -hmm. it. Are you ready? I am. Okay. Hi, philosophers. That's us. Ooh. I'm a 36-year-old woman in a monogamous relationship for nine years. We love each other and the relationship is easy, except for when it's not. In the beginning, our relationship was pretty hot sexually. We did all the things and experimented with threesomes and even went to a few swinger parties too, though we decided that they were not really for us. The last few years, we've barely been having sex at all, and when we do, it's really been a mercy fuck. I do it because I feel guilty that he's not getting any, and I don't want to be the one that's withholding in the relationship. The trouble is, I don't enjoy sex with him anymore, even though I think he's attractive. I've told him he can seek it out elsewhere, but he insists that he wants it with me. I've told him so many times how I like him to touch me, But after a while, he just goes back to what he always does, which is okay, but that's the problem. It's just okay. I feel like he's masturbating into me and his attention Mm. is not on me or even on us. It's like he's in his own fantasy, but he insists that he is with me the whole way. How can I tell him, again, that the kind of sex he's into is not what I'm into And I really need for us to do different stuff that focuses on my pleasure too. I feel really stuck with this and it's really affecting our relationship. Please Mm. help. What an introspective and self-aware person. Mm -hmm. Um, And to me it sounds like such a common narrative that I hear at work all the time, at least once a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's not uncommon and I, I think there's there's so many layers here so we had a relationship that was really fun mm-hmm. in the beginning yeah right lots and lots of fun mm-hmm. and explorative mm-hmm. right they did air quotes all the things mm-hmm. um right and then over time things shifted mm. things shifted and things aren't fun mm-hmm. anymore right, right? The she, fun has gone out of yeah. it for her especially right she didn't yeah. say that it was bad she said it's just okay yeah, it's just and okay. 
there's no there's no motivation in mm-hmm. just okay, mm-hmm. right? No one's excited to get into lukewarm bath water. <laughs> right? like, this is true. Right? Like there's no <laughs> no one's like, yippee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Mediocrity. Let's yeah. go. No, and not and not even just like <laughs> not even just like standard mediocrity. Right. Right? Like mundane. Mundane. Good. Okay. Right? That's a good you know, like tepid, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> just like <laughs> Right. And, and, and so just acknowledging that, you know, I, it would be really easy if we were sort of different clinicians uh, to pathologize, right? She's talking about not being interested in sex and it'd be really easy for us to start saying, you know, you have a desire disorder, Mm -hmm. right? But really acknowledging God, that I hate that phrase. It's awful. It's, it's awful. So especially because desire is fluid. Yeah. Right? But like what like what would be her motivation to participate mm-hmm. beyond guilt? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because she's not getting pleasure mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from her experience. And so like I'm doing this because I feel like I need to. So mm-hmm. that's work. Yeah. So sex is now labor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And not labor that she's getting reward from, just mm-hmm. temporary relief mm-hmm. from the burden of her conscience mm-hmm. because in some way it sounds like she feels like she owes him mm-hmm. sex. Mm-hmm. Right? Which in some ways when we, you know, enter into relationships, we kind of form contractual agreements, mm-hmm. right? Either explicitly or implicitly. Mm-hmm. Right. And so if we are a monogamous couple, then the implicit or sometimes explicit contract is that we are going to be sexual partners for the rest of forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and, and so that's the thing. Even though she said to him, he can go and get sex elsewhere. That there's that, yeah. I assume the kind of sex he wants to do, where he's kind of just jackrabbiting into her. That she doesn't want to do that anymore. She doesn't mind that he does that or that he wants that, but just not with her. And he says, "No, no, I want it with you." Yeah, right. It it sounds like he is preferring, at least in the sexual regard, for them to be mm-hmm. sexually monogamous, mm-hmm. right? And so. It has to be a negotiation. Mm -hmm. And so that is one of, you know, the skills that lend towards playing with others. Right. right? I think it's very different to think about like, I'm going to go out and play. Right. And it's a very, you know, Mm -hmm. you centered experience. Well, now that I am connected to emotional experience, I mean, I'm sorry, emotional intelligence. Right. The next level is for you to use your own emotional intelligence to then develop empathy. Right. And as you develop empathy, building the skill of mm-hmm. negotiation, mm-hmm. because I'm really clear on what I want. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean that because, you know, I know what I want, that yeah. you're just going to do it for me because I said so. Yeah. We've all played with that person yeah. and they're not fun. <laughs> yeah. Right. That yeah. for anyone who like I think about like the cartoon, like Rugrats, for example, mm-hmm. and for anyone who's familiar with that. Right. Like Angelica's character, like this is what we're going to do. Like She's right. not she's not a fun kid. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. And so that that is nobody's favorite person no. to play with. Yeah. Right. And it's funny, like for him, where it sounds like she's told him repeatedly, I like it like this, not like that. Yeah, I don't want to do that. And he's, I mean, if I read between the lines here, he's not hearing her. And then it makes me think, is he just ignoring it? Is he actually not hearing it? Or does he just not give a shit? Yeah. And, and because, of course, we don't know these folks, we can't say. It sounds yeah. like there there is at least an attempt. It, it sounded like there's, you know, there are experiences where he starts off mm. You know, doing what she's asked mm-hmm. and then transitions yeah. and we're habit forming creatures. Mm-hmm. Even if we think about it like in terms of like flow again, yeah. right? You just sort of like get in the zone kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when you mix like habit and, you know, not being like fully, fully pre- like I'm with you, mm-hmm. but I'm also like trying to feel good. Yeah. Right. And so like, yeah, maybe I started off doing the thing, mm-hmm. but there's also a way that I've come accustomed to reaching orgasm. Yeah, exactly. Right, which and which is so, a common thing. Right, and yeah. so like now it's feeling good, and like ooh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go on this road. Right, right, and it sounds like there there is a point at which he disconnects. Did 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 she use he him pronouns? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Right, so there's a point at which sort of you know they may start together and mm-hmm. then depart. Mm-hmm. Right, and so really acknowledging that mm-hmm. in some way the the challenge is in some way there. There is a ceiling to what she can do with him. Mm. And because she says here, I feel like he's masturbating into me mm-hmm. and his attention is not me on me or on us. It's like he's in his own fantasy. Absolutely. But he insists he's with me the whole way. So it sounds like when she has brought it up with him, he's saying, no, no, I'm paying attention to you. 
but it's not converting to her having an experience and, and he and and to right if we assume good intent right and to take people at their wor- word mm-hmm. he very well could be this is about me and you yeah, i am connected right. to you i'm mm-hmm. interested in you i'm attracted to you mm-hmm. and this just might be the way he is habituated mm-hmm. to orgasming yeah. right if we think about what often you know, I see in, in my practice for people who have been partnered with men for a long time, um, especially men who have sort of their own kind of masturbation routine, yeah. which great. Mm-hmm. I'm not against masturbation. Mm-hmm. Masturbation is cool. I'm not against porn. Mm-hmm. Porn is great entertainment, mm-hmm. not great education. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, right. That, you know, there is sort of a space or an energy that people can go to and it can appear kind of trance-like, right. right? You can kind of access sort of that that trance space mm-hmm. because part of the challenge of reintegrating partners when one partner has a, a very solid solo practice, yeah. right, is that one, they have a very concrete way of doing things that their body knows how to respond mm-hmm. to. Um, and two, with pornography, it's it's very passive. Yeah. Right, and so she can tell that he's gone into sort of a passive sort of space as yeah. he acts out his orgasm yeah. with her, and and I, I use I use that that framing in empathy for her experience, mm. right? Him acting out his orgasm with her, mm-hmm. right? And so it is not her responsibility to make him be different. No, it is her responsibility to continue to advocate for herself Herself, and her needs. And he really needs to take the next step in being curious and invested Mm -hmm. in negotiation. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, it sounds to me like he would benefit from, you know, hearing what she's saying and that even though he feels like he's with her the whole way, and as you said, like that's his subjective experience, he thinks that that's true. And for him it probably is true, except that... There is a disconnect between the way those two connect during sex that I think if they were my clients, I would invite them to, in the moment when it's actually happening, to stop and slow things down and actually recalibrate with each other and say, okay, where where are we at right now? Which is a little bit of kind of interrupting sort of thing. It'll yeah. mean that you're putting off potentially his orgasm, probably not hers. Yeah. Um, but so what? You know, it's like, yeah. I when, and often when folks get all, you know, I don't want to interrupt the orgasm. I don't want to interrupt the flow. And I'm like, well, why? Do you have yeah. to have, do you have an appointment? There, there why, will be. Why not interrupt the flow? You'll get it back. Yeah, there, there will be another you know? one. <laughs> right, yeah. It's not a finite thing. It's an infinite resource. Yeah, they, and I think that's the thing about pleasure is that it is infinite. We will, we will not run out yeah. of it if we learn how to use it well how to have a relationship with pleasure and is sustainable and nourishing and from an emotionally centered lens i would really get curious with her about guilty sex Mm -hmm. right because i don't imagine that that is a erotic or desire facilitating emotion okay right that the Mm -hmm. guilt right comes from a place of you know i i did something bad yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Guilt is a feel. Yeah. It doesn't feel good. No. It right. So good. to to do something, you know, in sort of you know to like restore yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. Sex is like this, you know, restorative, like a repentance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know that that feels very erotic yeah. for her, and I would be really curious about whether or not she really does have to perform guilty sex. Right. Mm-hmm. She can absolutely mm-hmm. choose to. Mm-hmm. But I'd get really curious with her, like, is there an orgasm? Is there pleasure? Mm. Is there... What does she get out of it? What's yeah, is, the, is there her? sensuality yeah. or fun or eroticism? Is mm. that a place you can access from guilt? And if yeah. not, then, right, why put sex in a place where fun can't happen? Yeah, yeah. Right, if that's, that's what she wants out of sex. It sounds like she's not okay with, you know, yeah. just... And that's the thing. So I don't know, or we don't know from this letter, what her incentive for having sex is. We don't know why she's... I mean, she's saying that she doesn't enjoy it with him anymore. Mm -hmm. And she put that in, with him. Does that mean that she would enjoy it with somebody else? I imagine she's wondering that if she's not having... Right? If you're not having fun where you're at, you automatically... Unless you were to decide to be or work towards apathy, Mm -hmm. right? So I no longer you know, I don't care. Right. 
anymore, right? Sort of this like anhedonic space, mm-hmm. right? Where I just disconnect from my feelings so I don't feel bad, but I also don't feel good. like Anything I'm not- Anything at all. Yeah, right? Yeah. If I'm already not feeling good, I'd rather not feel bad mm-hmm. too. So mm-hmm. kind of numbing out and just being like, I don't care about sex, period. I'm right. not attracted to people, period. <laughs> right, which is where people get to very often, too. right? Yeah, like, yeah. like why leave yourself hopeful mm-hmm. if you're only going to be disappointed, mm-hmm. right? Most people- Many people, I should say, right, they, they decide, well, whatever, I'll right. just lay here. Yeah. And sex is, it's just easy. right, sex is a thing that I give to my partner mm-hmm. Thursdays mm-hmm. and every other Sunday, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's a really common response, you know, that passive kind of, I'll just do it once a week then if it'll make you happy through gritted teeth. And it's like, that's not, and I think even in a, in a very traditional heterosexual dynamic, where, you know, the guy wants it and she's like, mm, I could do without it. Even then, in my observations of heterosexual men, it's not that they want it at all costs. They do want their partners to Absolutely. be invested and emotionally involved, but then it becomes a problem when she says, don't touch me like this, touch me like that, mm-hmm. and he says, no, no, <laughs> then, you know, yeah. then we're really never going to win. We're just going to constantly be at I- loggerheads about that. I have been fortunate in my practice, right? We know every sort of person exists. And I have yet to meet a man who has said that I don't care whether or not you enjoy this. Mm-hmm. Right? I've met a few, unfortunately, mm. in Australia, not here yet. I don't think that that's a uniquely Australian yeah, thing. Yeah, no, you just. But the bulk of my experience has been in Australia. And yeah, I have and met, you've, you've I can happened think of to. Two occasions that's a very small cohort it was yeah. right they right they are folks who exist right and i imagine our sample is also biased because mm-hmm. who would be invested in actually working on yeah. things enough to pay someone exactly um right but really acknowledging that people want like you want to have a good time yeah yeah, yeah. generally right? folks people want to have a good time and you know good time could mean a lot of different things mm-hmm. could mean a lot of different behaviors right but ultimately we know when we are and we aren't mm-hmm. and we are we care about whether the person that we're playing with if we are emotionally attuned if mm-hmm. we are engaged we care about the other person's experience mm-hmm. on the other side it doesn't feel good for mm-hmm. us right which is why you know when we think about like you know, sitcoms, right? And it's over and they're kind of like, ah, so was it, was it, was it good for you? Right. Right. You know, like why ask that question? Yeah, yeah. Was it still fun if you weren't having fun? Exactly. Right. We don't want to be that person. Exactly. And so really acknowledging that, you know, if she's not having fun and she's really clear on that, mm-hmm. being very clear on that. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and that would be another thing that I'm getting curious about. Right. These are conversations that have happened um, but because it's also very vulnerable space, what I also see is someone says, well, I, well, I told you. And in the course of like their 13 year relationship, they said mm. it twice. Mm-hmm. And not to say that twice is not enough, right. but often twice is not enough. Yeah. Right. Not that, <laughs> right. Not that I have to like yeah, bully yeah, you into yeah. it. But mm. if, if this is something that is mm. significant, we have to put it in a, mm-hmm. a space of mm-hmm. significance. And also trying to say things different ways so that so the penny drops. Yeah. Because I think. Again, you know, particularly with heterosexuals, particularly with heterosexual men, and I think heterosexual women to a degree also, there is a very strong emphasis on the, you know, the narrative that this is how sex looks. Sex looks like penis Mm -hmm. and vagina sex and everything else is foreplay in air quotes, which means it's not real sex, which we know, again, from a pleasure point of view that that doesn't really apply particularly for cis women and people are skipping foreplay because we're all serious productive adults That's and right. we're goal right and, <laughs> and, and we've only got right, this and, much and time we're, and, and we're, we're goal be, oriented yeah. so i'm going to be efficient yes and skip straight to the if orgasm sex, air yes. quotes right yes. and so well yeah because yeah yeah people have i've got sex i've got things time. to do right i've got other, <laughs> right i've got other Right. Other kinds of productive. Right. Sex is is part of our duties as serious, responsible human beings. Yes. But also I've got a laundry list yes. of other kinds of productivity right. that need to be accomplished today. So mm-hmm. we've got this 31 and a half minutes. <laughs> uh, so let's hop to. Yeah. Right. I'm, yeah, we'll yeah, spend yeah. sort of the next sort of three or four. Touch exactly. a nipple here. You know, kiss a labia here. <laughs> right. Stroke a testy here. Like, OK, let, let's. Right, skip ahead, and and not to say this is everyone's sex, not to say this this is what heterosexual sex is, um, but even if you think about the way 
uh, even like a lot of like mainstream porn, mm-hmm. you know, demonstrates yeah. what sex is. Yeah, which right? is why it's not good sex education. Right, and like we could get lost in all of that. It, exactly, and skipping all all the way, th- you know, through all the play Mm -hmm. air quotes all the you know many of the fun parts right that we then start to do that in practice and and returning to you know her experience of not having fun i think a lot about about boundaries and it is not a deal breaker for her to be a sex toy in her relationship Mm. Mm. right and so i i acknowledge that from our serious adult lens if we're not engaging in play we don't have a lot of motivation for change together right Right. like i'm not having a good time but i'm dealing with that yeah and we're very we're practiced in that we do that nine to five monday to friday um i don't know how aware how much of a problem Mm -hmm. it is for him but certainly if there is no clear acknowledgement Mm -hmm. of what the cost is of what the consequences are and i don't mean like if you don't change then blank but sometimes we also need to hear like this this is where this leads to yeah you're allowed to have deal breakers and if we can't inject you know creative energy if we can't be motivated by excitement and Mm -hmm. passion and desire Mm -hmm. then truthfully what we are also motivated by is fear yeah and i'm not saying inject fear into the relationship but being really clear about boundaries right allowing yourselves maybe even if i divorce it from fear because fear fear is a big frame but if i I, if i were to say the word conflict right right? so she's having sex to avoid in some ways conflict Mm -hmm. conflict is important yeah Right, that if we allow this to sit in a mm-hmm. space of conflict, mm-hmm. it challenges us to be creative. Yeah. Right, because we need a solution. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, right? and yeah, I mean, I often use the phraseology of incentive. Mm-hmm. What is the incentive for this to change? What's the incentive if this stays the same? And are you going to be okay with that? Yeah, right, because he's he's having orgasms. Yeah. Right, and he is. <laughs> Right. Sure. And, and, and so if nothing else, my my hope is that he can get curious yes. about her. Yeah. So talk to me about <clears throat> your experience, either personally and professionally, about the importance of play and playfulness as a therapeutic device or a human process. People come in to therapy feeling stuck and play is a space that generates a lot of clarity mm-hmm. right? because we're having fun. Yeah. And you're very clear when you're not having fun. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you if know you, when you don't like yeah. something, but it's hard to know, I guess, when you do like something. Or, or it's hard to know what you like before you get into the space. Yes. Right? And so play requires curiosity. Mm-hmm. And I love the injection or introduction of curiosity to our stuck places. Mm-hmm. Play as an opportunity, mm. or if I was wearing my clinical hat an intervention (laughs) right is that you know it's not as like formulaic or as you know a lot of the other things that happen in our lives when Mm -hmm. we're thinking about we need to make changes Mm -hmm. right one if play is your homework Mm -hmm. right like that's okay yeah 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 right imagine being in elementary school and like your homework was Mm -hmm. like okay go play Mm -hmm. (laughs) right have recess yeah 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 and come back and tell me five things that you enjoy yeah (laughs) go out there and try some things and then come back and tell me which of the things seemed the most interesting yeah right and also play is an access point that in some ways like we know and so i'm giving people back their expertise Mm -hmm. right that we know how to play. We often just need to relearn it. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, revisiting what were the things that you used to do for fun? Like, yeah. when was the last point in time you remember mm-hmm. doing something you enjoyed without a concrete goal? Yeah. That is what play does for us. Play is our first language. Yeah. Play was how we learned everything. Mm-hmm. At baseline, Absolutely. right? All like the foundation of everything we learn. All of our emotional intelligence. Absolutely. Rather. Yeah. Emotional intelligence, the process of reconnecting to your inner world, mm-hmm. your inner verse, your emotional landscape, your actual desires gives you so much power to transform mm-hmm. the rest of your life yeah. and get unstuck. Yeah. 
Right. And through that, you know, knowing, mm-hmm. through that wisdom, through that practice of emotional intelligence, you can absolutely start to create a life that has access yeah. to play. Yeah. And what is more fulfilling than doing things that feel good? Right. Right. Those feelings above and beyond the logic and the and the the obligation, we start moving into something that resembles a sustainable, somewhat joy filled lifestyle, I think. And we also have the opportunity from that point to really be connected. Yeah. So thanks for coming today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such an enriching conversation. Where can people find you? One place is my website. It's my full name, shadeenfrancis.com. The other is on social media. I exist both on Twitter and on Instagram. You'll Mm -hmm. find me under my name as well on both platforms. Shadeen Francis LMFT on Instagram and Shadeen Francis on Twitter. Hello, listeners. To submit an erotic quandary for the philosophers to ponder, follow The Erotic Philosopher on Instagram and Twitter at The Erotic Philos, that's P-H-I-L-O-S, and click on the Google Form link in the bio and to discover more about my online sexology courses as well as how to work with me directly, head on over to cindydarnell.com. That's C-Y-N-D-I-D-A-R-N-E-L-L.com. Thanks for listening.